Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.1 Beta 1. iOS 26.1 Beta 1 is available to developers and soon to public beta testers, hopefully by the time you're watching this video or later this week. Now this was around 16.05 gigabytes on my iPhone 17 Pro Max. It's a huge install, reinstalling the whole OS, and anytime you go from a regular public version such as iOS 26 to a new beta, it's going to reinstall everything, so it's a pretty large install this time around. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iPadOS 26.1 Beta 1, along with the same version for macOS, tvOS, HomePodOS, VisionOS, and watchOS as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to Settings, then we'll go to General, then About. And as you can see, the build number is 23B5044L. This particular build does include new features and changes, and the first thing that we had is a new modem update. So there is a new modem update going from iOS 26's public release to 26.1 beta 1, and also there was a new hello screen this time around, so that appeared on all the devices I upgraded. As far as new features, well, Apple Intelligence is now available in more languages. So if you have Apple Intelligence, you'll now find that it's available in Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, Portuguese for Portugal, Swedish, Turkish, Chinese, traditional, and Vietnamese. So those languages should now be available, and you can see them here listed in the language options if you go into Apple Intelligence. So that's something they've updated, and they've also made some changes to the UI. For example, if we go into music here, and maybe we're playing this music here, so we'll go into this song, we'll just turn it down, we'll press play, and if I tap the next song, you'll see that it just jumps in the actual menu here to the next song. So you can see it, you can even swipe here as well to go to the next song. You can also swipe in the now playing mini player, so you'll see some odd contrast issues with liquid glass, but as we swipe through, you can swipe back and forth, and there's some nice haptic feedback to go along with this. So you'll see it just changed, and we do have liquid glass, but for whatever reason, sometimes it's a little bit slow. Also, if we go to the home screen, so let's get rid of these here, go to the home screen, you'll see if I tap on the album art to go full screen, it shrinks the clock and then goes full screen. It's a new animation, it looks really nice, it's a little bit jittery here down at the bottom, but overall looks pretty good. So they're refining the overall animations and you can see a change there. Also there's an update in photos. If we go into photos, and if we find a video that I took at the ZMAX drag strip in Charlotte, you'll see here that below we have a new player here. So we can slide back and forth. We have this new scrubber and then the overall look is a little bit different and it's just making it a little bit easier to see and more information. So you can see that here. To go along with the language theme in Apple Intelligence, if we go into Translate, we have additional languages for live translation. You'll see it says their language, and we have more options now. So if we compare it to what we had before, so you'll see we have quite a few additional options. So we have Chinese, Mandarin, and Simplified, Chinese, Mandarin, and Traditional. Then we have in addition to this, we have Italian, Japanese, Korean, and Portuguese. So those have been added as well. Now, if we go into accessibility, there's an update here. So under accessibility, if we go to display and text size and increase the contrast, once we increase the contrast, it's actually a little bit different from page to page. So if I turn it on with iOS 26, you'll see the arrow in the upper left is slightly different and you may see differences throughout. So if we go back and forth, you'll see the way it looks. It actually does look a little bit more contrasty, but some of the buttons look a little bit different. And if we go into different menus again, that arrow has changed. So we're going to see slight changes throughout depending on what you have set. And if we turn this back off, we'll take a further look at the next thing, which is liquid glass. Now the toggle for Wi-Fi has finally been updated. So if we go into Wi-Fi here, and then we turn it off, you'll see that it has liquid glass. And this is something they didn't update or maybe they forgot to update with iOS 26 or didn't have time, but now it has the liquid glass look. Also within the phone app, the dialer is a little bit different. You'll see it looks more like transparent glass now, where on iOS 26, the public release on the left has more of a gray look to it. Now it's more of a glass look to it. So that's something that's slightly updated. Now, something else that's been updated that's been found in the code by Aaron P613 on X is that it looks like Apple's sort of bringing back rapid security updates, but under a different name. Background security improvement improves the security of your iPhone by installing security improvements and system files before they are available in the iOS software updates. So this should be in the future. 
maybe we won't even know about it and they'll just push security updates. But either way, it looks like they're trying to get back to those rapid security releases, which I think were a good idea for simple updates. But again, we haven't seen more than a couple of those. Now, as far as anything else, well, Apple did push out a new preview of a bunch of new immersive films for Apple Vision Pro. You can see it on their Apple newsroom here. And there's new titles from Audi, the BBC, Canal Plus, CNN, HYBE, MotoGP, and Red Bull. So these will be coming soon, and it's great to see more content in immersive video style, as that's seemingly lacking quite a bit on Vision Pro lately. So maybe we'll see more of those very soon. As far as bugs and bug fixes this time around, well, with iOS 26, it seems more people are having Wi-Fi issues on the public release, especially on the new iPhone 17, 17 Pro, 17 Pro Max, and iPhone Air models. So maybe we'll see a new release for that soon. Also, Safari seems to be much smoother in iOS 26.1 Beta 1. So even compared to what we had on the 17 Pro Max with iOS 26's public release, it seems much, much better. And there's some great news when it comes to overall fixes with the release notes. So if we go into iOS's 26.1 beta one public facing release notes, you'll see here, if we scroll down, we don't have very many. And that's great news as with iOS 26, we had 37 categories of known issues. Now with iOS 26.1 beta one, there's only five known issues total in just two categories. So much, much better. One of them is Siri. You can see here and then known issues here with some code. Otherwise it looks like they've resolved quite a few issues and this looks to be a very big bug fix. Now, maybe we're not going to see those on the outside just yet, but things seem to be much faster and fluid. Maybe some animation changes are here and there, but the small bugs that were all over the place are seemingly fixed. So we'll have to continue to investigate this, talk about it in the weekend follow-up and see what's actually fixed. Now, as far as releases, we know iOS 26.0.1 is in the works. It seems like according to more recent information, and that could be rolling out sometime this week if they continue to do what they've done year over year. So usually we'll see that the following week after the iPhone 17 release and public release of the newest version. So maybe we'll see that this week along with the beta as soon as tomorrow. And then as far as iOS 26.1 beta two, will probably be in a couple weeks based on what they've done in the past. So I wouldn't expect anything next week but probably the second week of October. Maybe we'll see a public release toward the end of October. So lots of things going on with this. And of course we could see some new releases coming out in October with new iPads or other hardware as well. When it comes to performance, well, the iPhone 17 Pro Max seems like it was made for iOS 26 and is super smooth and fluid anyway. There are some stutters, of course, here and there in the 16 Pro Max and older phones, and maybe it will smooth out with 26.1 beta one. But again, we need to test this for a few days, see if it actually is faster and what it's like. When it comes to heat, well, the 17 Pro Max definitely dissipates heat a little bit better than the previous versions, and it seems like it's much cooler than it was just installing the update. It didn't really heat up that much, so that's a good sign. And when it comes to overall battery life, well, let's take a look at that. Battery in general for me has been pretty decent so far on this device. So I left off using the iPhone 16 Pro Max, around 93% battery health, and we'll take a look at what we get on the 17 Pro Max, but battery health here, if we take a look, I was at 93% with 335 cycles. On the 17 Pro Max, I've got just three cycles, and of course I'm at 100%, and battery usage so far, well yesterday, I used 74% of the battery and had five hours and one minutes of screen active time, 11 hours and 37 minutes of screen idle time. It's much better than me than this was for the 16 Pro Max for me, so much, much improved here. If we take a look at today, three hours and 38 minutes, and I've used, well, about 41%. So overall, very good. Again, we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video. When it comes to overall storage used, well, I've seen maybe it might be a little bit bigger than we expected, but if we go to iPhone storage, give it a second to load. And if we compare iOS 26 on the iPhone 17 Pro with the iPhone 17 Pro Max on 26.1 beta one, you'll see it's taking up a lot more storage, 24.11 gigabytes total. Most of that is coming from Apple intelligence where maybe it has to do with those new language updates. So it seems like it's taking up a lot more storage this time around, but sometimes that changes through the beta so we'll have to wait and see what happens there now i did run benchmarks initially this can vary of course but if we take a look at geekbench 6 
Initially, I got 3,644 for single core, 9,182 for multi-core. Compared to the public version, it's slightly lower, but again, I just installed this, and even with the public version, I've only used it for a few days. So we'll have to wait and see, as I've seen some people over 10,000 for multi-core, so we'll have to check that a little bit later. But overall, it seems to be performing well. We'll have to check back, see how ProMotion is and things like that, and be sure to check back for the weekend follow-up. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>